What's going on YouTube, GSNow right here. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use a tool called Wondershare PDF Element. And this one is a very good PDF editor, converter, and stuff like that. You can do multiple things with PDF documents. So we're going to get into it and I'm going to show you exactly what it can do. And of course, how you can do it with a sample document. So the official website is this one here. There is a free trial available for both Windows and Mac OS, which is currently the version seven. However, the version eight will come very soon. Now, once you have the the Wondershare PDF element, it looks like this. And we can open any PDF document we want. Now I do have this term paper I wrote in here. So if we open it, you can see exactly what it contains. It's not only an editor, you can also see documents with no problem. And of course, if you want to zoom a document in or out, you press command and plus for zooming in. And of course, you press command and minus in order to zoom out. So a pretty good keyboard shortcut. Now, aside from being able to view any document in PDF format, this program program allows you to actually modify the document. Here on the left, you have a couple of tools that can be used. For example, on the markup, if you open it, it's going to show this toolbar, which allows you to do various things. For example, to create various shapes, like this rectangle that I'm going to create here. And then of course, you can go ahead and um, add various stamps or sign the document using this button here, which you know allows you to perform a signing process and put it anywhere on the document. So we can go ahead and put it down below here and the document is basically signed. Of course, you would want to create your signature as close as possible to your original. And then of course, we can add various text boxes or underline, we press underline here, we get red, for example. And of course, we can go ahead and underline whatever we find important. So I'm going to underline SRAM here and EPROM and of course, flash and stuff like that and even the AVR. So basically, you can do stuff like this. Let's also underline this functions. You can add sticky notes with various things. For example, right next to this paragraph here, I'm going to press and get a sticky note. So I'm going to say edit this paragraph to comply with requirements. So when I open this, I will be able to tell there is a note and I will be able to see what exactly it contains. So like a small reminder that you can add on the document for you to know later what you wanted to do with the document. Then of course you can even highlight and we can select various colors or of course you can go with a color picker which has all the colors possible. So let's go with the uh, yellow and of course all you have to do is to just drag it and it will underline everything. And as you can see the black color stands out in order for you to be able to read properly, but it's still got the highlighting. So you can go ahead and highlight various parts of the uh, document. So this is a pretty good PDF tool. However, this is not all it can do. Let's say I want to add an image, I'm going to go ahead and remove the senator from here. So right click in the uh, trash can. So I do have the image prepared. So I'm going to go here to image, which basically allows you to add any image to the document. Because as you probably know, a PDF document is not an editable document. One once a PDF document has been created, it's basically impossible to edit it unless you have a tool like this. And this one is actually a much better alternative to the Adobe one because the Adobe is actually pretty expensive and it does basically the same thing. In fact, I do believe that Wondershares have more features. So if you want to add a photo, we just selected from the screen. I already prepared it and you get to add it anywhere you want. I would like to add it here below this one. And of course, once you do that, you can resize so that it looks good and I'm going to resize a little bit so that it looks perfect a little bit more maybe and there we go now of course a photo without a caption means basically nothing so I'm gonna have to go here to markup and I'm gonna have to create a text box so I'm gonna make a text box here and I'm gonna say let's check the table below for Arduino models all right so at this point we can resize this one so that it looks better I want to do something like this and of course I'm gonna resize it again to fit and there we go. And we can position it somewhere in the middle. And now it looks a little bit better. So you can do various modifications to your document and you can add your revised stamp here, which also contains the date. And there is also an important tool in here on the redact mark for redaction. So if you want to permanently black out various things, you can do so you can mark for reduction, for example, a whole paragraph or a couple of words, and they would look like this on the final document, they're basically completely removed, but you still know there was something there. It's obviously marked out. But if you open the document and you have access to it, you can see exactly what has been marked out. But if you don't hover your mouse on it, it won't show, which is actually quite cool. You can even select the color for the redaction. So red, for example, would look like this. 
So as you can see, it's not visible unless you hover your mouse on it. But that's nowhere near everything. You can add or edit the background, you can add or edit watermarks, headers, footers, you can crop pages, you can even convert the document. For example, if you want to be able to edit it freely, you would be able to edit it as a word or for example as pages or as PowerPoint. Since this is a Mac, I have pages installed, so I would like to have a pages document. I'm going to select pages there and I'm going to add the document, so add files and select select the term paper here and that would be it. I press apply and I will be able to get the file. So I'm going to select the destination folder and that's it. It converted and now we have a pages file. So let's see exactly what the result is. Do keep in mind that conversions often do not match very well the formatting, but in this case it looks to be okay. It looks to have kept all the formatting, which is actually quite good. But do keep in mind there is no photo here because we didn't save our modified PDF. So we would have to save it first. We want to press save here and there we go. At this point we can go back to the uh, tool here, the PDF converter, select the document again from the source, which is basically on my screen, turn paper, press apply and of course save it in the same place. Now if we open the new document it would contain everything. So let's wait for it to complete and there you go. You can see all the modifications that we added to the document are now present in here. And of course there are more tools like batch remove, data extraction, combining PDFs and of course OCR text recognition which enables you to get the text from a file that is already printed and scanned and you will be able to get it as editable document. Of course you have to select the document language and some languages may not be supported but English, French, Italian and many other common ones are present. When it comes to the OCR part that's a very important feature of PDF element. For example here I have a scanned document. You can see that I'm able to open it in PDF element because it's a PDF file but this one is not an actual document. This one has been scanned using a flatbed scanner so all the text in here is not editable. You cannot select it, you cannot copy, you cannot paste. It's basically a photo a glorified photo in a PDF format. Now with the OCR what it can do is to basically transform this into an actual editable document. Now you can see that Wondershare PDF element automatically decided that this is a file that has been scanned. So we do get this perform OCR in here. You press perform OCR on an open document which has been scanned and of course you're going to have to select the language in here. Many languages are supported as I mentioned earlier but I'm going to select English here because the document is in English. And the down sample too, I'm going to select 300 dpi here. I'm going to select editable text and perform OCR. Now this is going to take a minute or so depending on how big the document is. In this case it's just one page so it's not going to be a huge document. So as you can see it went pretty quick. Now if you open it, the newly created document, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, you can see that we actually have the document but this time is no longer just a photo. We can select stuff, we can edit stuff and of course this is pretty cool. If you go here to text now and select this portion for example you can add text to it like say hello and as you can see it basically follows the same uh, font the same format and it can also remove parts of the original text like this so as you can see it's no longer part of that you can copy it and move it to a new document and stuff like that and you can even move it around so basically like this so it does everything that you would want done with a document that has been scanned including changing the color of the font and stuff like that so this used to be a photo and now it's an editable document on top of that photo but the the best part is that you can also create forms. So if you go here to organize pages and we create a new page on this document, we press here, we can actually go ahead and create a form. The form tool is basically this one here and we can create various things. For example, we can add a text field that we want the user to actually complete. So for example, here we're going to edit this one and it says text one for now we're going to name it, let's say name. And here on the tooltip, we're going to say write your name and of course the default value will be name and this one would be required and now the user can actually complete their name. You can actually make this form to be you know full page if you want for example this document to be like a contract or something and then down below to make like a form for the user to sign. So for example you can copy this and you know add another one like this. You can have checkboxes too for example for terms and conditions and stuff like that. So we want to add one in there. We're going to pass it like this. We put it like this. There we go. And of course we can edit it. Uh, Checkbox one, we're going to make it terms and 
conditions like this and we're going to say visible and required and we can select the checkbox style from start to circle to close to square to whatever. Uh, I'm gonna make it this size here so that it's visible. You can have drop downs for example with various options. Let's say you know a list of something. You can have buttons to submit the form after you complete it. For example let's say here I want to say submit and you can make the button look like this and there you go. And if you preview it it's gonna look something like this. The user can uh, check the form. Of course you can make it smaller if you want to. They can write in here their name and surname and stuff like that. So Joan do and you know agree the terms and conditions pick something from the list and press submit and you can code the uh, actions for each thing for example for the buttons and stuff like that they can actually call something you have the appearance here and you also have the actions for example to submit to a page open a file open a link uh, show or hide a field and stuff like that and of course you have various uh, points of action so this is actually pretty cool there are multiple things in here like digital signature you can add if you want to have document signing like real document signing with certificates and stuff and other types of forms. You can export a data, form field recognition, and so on. You can even encrypt a document. So for example, I'm going to encrypt this one. And here you have multiple and very strong encryption levels. I'm going to create a password. So I'm going to say term paper one here. And that's basically it. I'm going to press apply and I'm going to save the document. And at this point, this new PDF file is encrypted. So if we close everything here, we can remove all of them here, basically trash them. And we got a new term paper document, which is now encrypted. So if you try to open it, it's going to ask for a password, thus ensuring a level of privacy. So let's say term paper one and now we can open the document with all the changes and stuff like that so yeah a pretty good pdf document editor it has a lot of features you can annotate you can edit you can do anything you want to pdf documents which is actually quite good so definitely check it out in the link below thank you for watching i am geosnow till the next time subscribe to stay updated and peace out